Hey guys, what's going on? Richie from Photons Across the Year. So I just got a laser a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's this one right here. I waited a couple of weeks to make the review just to see how it held up and it held up really well. So um, now I'm gonna call this an eBay style laser pointer because everybody knows what eBay style laser pointers are, but I got this from laserpointerstore.com. And if you're looking for a laser pointer of any host style, any uh, wavelength, any battery configuration, I would recommend going to laserpointerstore.com because they've never done me wrong and I usually get those lasers within a couple of weeks. So that's pretty good. The last time I ordered a laser from eBay, it took a month to get here. So a couple of weeks is pretty good coming from laserpointerstore.com. So like I said, this is known as the 920 series, or the 920 model. It costs about 10 bucks and the prices on Laser Pointer Store are phenomenal. They really are. This thing was like $9.90. I'm not sure how much I paid for shipping. I think shipping was free because I purchased a couple of other things with it. Um, but 10 bucks, you can get one of these things and I believe he makes sure they are in working order before he even ships them out. So that's kind of cool. All right, so this is the 100 milliwatt 405. And it does take an 18650 and it is case negative. So the positive terminal of the battery goes toward the diode, of course. Makes a really loud squeaky sound when you plug it in and see watch or when you unscrew it and screw it back in. <laughs> All right, so. Now it came with a little star cap, but I kind of took it off because it is, well, it's it's less than 100 milliwatts of 405, so it can't really do much with the star cap unless it's completely dark in your room, uh, but I did take it off. Now I've taken this thing apart to expose the driver. The driver actually looks like it's in really good condition. It looks like it's a pretty good quality driver, which is quite surprising uh, coming from a $10 laser pointer. Uh, the switch feels great. So I will show you guys. Now, of course, I am using a fog machine, so you can see the, uh, brings out the beam much better. Of course, if I had no fog machine on, this is definitely in broad daylight, so you would not even see the beam at all. So I'm using fog for that. Now, I've tested this thing on the meter. I'm not going to plug my meter back in. I'm going to tell you the results. It's quite interesting because I found that all of my purple lasers are like this. My uh, Sky Lasers pin, uh, my Sky Lasers 80 milliwatt pin, my uh, BDR209 16X laser build, along with a couple of other violet lasers I've had, including this one and another one that I'm getting ready to review, which is this one. Um, I noticed that these things, I guess it's because violet is what it is. It's usually used in Blu-ray players and stuff like that, except for diodes like this. This was probably not used in that, but like the BDR-209, it's a pioneer, you know, it's a pioneer uh, diode, along with the uh, the 12X, that's a Sony one. I noticed that these things are incredibly stable. It's, it's, it's amazing how stable that purple laser diodes are. Um, I hit this thing on the meter and it shot up to about 70, 72 milliwatts pretty quick and it never really stopped. It continued to, it gradually went up. Uh, it went up slowly, I mean, uh, and it continuously went up for a good couple of minutes. And I didn't want to leave these things on, I, do, I didn't want to leave it on too long uh, because I think the duty cycle is like 60 seconds. So <laughs> two minutes is definitely pushing it. Um, but I noticed that it never stopped along with the other one I've got, including my BDR-209 build, which has exceeded 800 milliwatts on the meter. It took a while to get there, but it never really stopped, which is just, crazy so it's kind of hard to get an accurate reading on the purple laser diodes um, like laser pointers I mean including some of the ones you build but in in my experience it's really hard uh, to get an accurate reading of how much power it's putting up because it continuously keeps climbing and so this went to 72 73 milliwatts and it slowed down and it finally reached 75 76 and then I went ahead and shut it off so it's supposed to be 100 milliwatts, close enough, it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll probably get there eventually if you stand there for three minutes or four minutes, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm definitely gonna call this 100 milliwatts. You have the optics in there, taking the battery completely out. There's your nice little, probably an acrylic lens. <laughs> I definitely can't see that being a glass lens. Okay, so we will take this piece off now and we will expose the driver. I thought this was quite interesting because, take this little foam piece off. Now I thought this was quite interesting. You can actually see it's a really decent driver. It looks like it's a pretty good quality driver. I'm quite surprised. Uh, notice that little bar that goes across that. It didn't take me long to figure out what that was. That's obviously where the switch used to be or was supposed to be or designed to be. Uh, then, of course, that little metal bar is basically just bypassing the switch so you can use the spring instead. Uh, if there was a switch there, you would have to bypass it using a piece of wire anyway. So that's they, they've already done it. So that's why that bar is there in case you're wondering. 
And I thought this was kind of funny. You can actually see the potentiometer in there. So I guess technically if I wanted to, I could turn this up uh, or down. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I can't really figure out a way to get the driver out of there because as you can see, it's blocked off the threads here. And you can see it's, uh, you don't want to risk getting a Allen wrench that's, um, you know, or a, yeah, an Allen wrench that's, you know, I guess slanted or turned a certain way. You could damage it or you could definitely break the driver off of the diode there. So you don't want to mess with that. So that may be why they did that. You cannot access the driver, or at least you cannot access that potentiometer without damaging it by pushing it out of there. And I've tried to push this thing out of here. It will not come out. So definitely design it to where you can't mess with it. But it sucks because you can see the potentiometer and you just want to turn it up. But <laughs> I'm just going to leave it where it is. So as you can see, the driver's pretty good, pretty good uh, quality, it looks like. The spring's actually perfectly uh, centered, have the nice inductor in there, potentiometer. So yeah, it feels pretty solid. Yeah, so that basically just sums up a quick review, or somewhat <laughs> quick review, of the eBay-style laser uh, from laserpointerstore.com, the 920 model. Uh, if you like this thing, go to laserpointerstore.com. I will have a description, or I will have it in the description down on the bottom so you can check it out. So thanks for watching.